Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about a, a pretty interesting topic um, and that's uh, your own location. Um, most, if not all of you, um, have a, a mobile or a cell phone and most, if not all of you, probably take that pretty much everywhere you go. Um, and one thing among many of the remarkable things that the cell phone lets us do is, is it also lets us track location. Um, now, not everybody's um, aware of this, or if they are aware of it, they're not, not quite aware as of to the extent that their location is actually tracked and really what that means. Uh, but it, it's really um, important for, for you to understand uh, that your phone is doing this and that the data is very valuable. Uh, and I, I'm not going to get into all the ethical issues uh, about collecting data like this, but I, I really just want to demonstrate this and um, hopefully um, shed some light on it and, and give people an opportunity to really think about what this is and, and what, it, what it means um, for all of us. Um, so the, the easiest way uh, is I'm going to demonstrate this essentially through Google. Um, most of, uh, if you have an Android-based phone, well, or if you have a, uh, an iOS-based phone, um, you have the option to turn on and off location settings, right? And and a lot of applications will ask you for permission to do this. And I'm going to basically demonstrate what that information um, might look like. So um, the example I'm going to use again is is uh, in Google. Uh, Google used to have a separate application called um, Google Latitude. They um, now have merged that uh, back into just their their general maps platform. Uh, but if you want to read all about it, you can just do an internet search for um, uh, location in Google settings and, and you'll find this page. Uh, there's also a, a pretty interesting section on privacy and data and some other things but um, so every device is going to be a little bit different but basically um, you know I'm going to do this kind of within the context of having an Android based phone you can turn on these settings and um, kind of let it go. Now it's going to run in the background and I think every couple of weeks or so Google will send you an email basically reminding you that yes you are recording this information um, but again you know your phone can be doing this anyway you're just basically giving your access or giving yourself access to it which I think is really kind of the key. So once you've been doing this for maybe a day or two um, you can go log into Google and you can go and do a search uh, for um, location history or you can just type maps.google.com uh, slash location history and up pops this um, pretty nice little dashboard uh, and what you're looking at here is my location history so I've been doing this for a while um, and it, it's pretty powerful um, you, you're basically right tracking yourself every day and, and you'll start to notice patterns and when you think of this in the context of GIS and the things that you can do with GIS it's pretty powerful um, so uh, for, I, I'm going to demonstrate this using some data um, from a recent trip of mine um, when I went out to uh, a conference uh, in Los Angeles um, and uh, you can see here's here's my flight right so leaving New York going to LA uh, and but the day that we're going to really work uh, with and, and focus on is um, Saturday August 17th and so for that day this was essentially my footprint right my geographic footprint and I'm not going to spoil it but if, if um, um, if you look at this data closely, you can probably pretty quickly figure out where I stayed, um, you know, the name of the hotel, uh, you know, where I went during the day, obviously. Uh, and of course, you can probably tell what I did when I um, was departing. So, um, you know, it, uh, the, the dashboard itself is pretty powerful. It has some built-in tools that let you um, animate this over time. Uh, has this nice sort of um, histogram time setter feature down here uh, and so basically as your cell phone's ping is being collected by the application um, you're really recording a, a latitude longitude point right along with a, a date and timestamp. Um, now one of the the really cool things about this application um, is that not only can you access your own information but um, you can actually export it out as a KML right? So. Uh, if we do this, uh, we're going to get a KML file that, of course, then we can pull into um, to ArcGIS. So, um, just to demonstrate what the KML kind of looks like, if you just open it up in a um, in a Notepad document, right? It's just a um, it's a it's something you, you can just read as, as essentially raw text, and you're going to see some um, metadata about the KML file sort of up here, right? Um, but the, the meat, the, the information that you're really interested in are things like this, right? So here's your longitude, latitude, coordinate. Um, you're also collecting um, a date and a timestamp, right? So when you have these two fields together, it becomes pretty powerful. Um, so let's, uh, 
let's go ahead and minimize this. Um, what I'm going to demonstrate now is when we pull this in to, um, say, ArcGIS, um, where we can kind of go from there. Okay, so I've got ArcGIS open. Um, I'm using 10.2 for this uh, demonstration. Um, I've created a new data frame, uh, so I'm just going to give it a name real quick. We'll just call this, uh, I don't know, California. Now, I've already uh, grabbed a quick uh, California shapefile that I, I pulled out of a, a larger um, continental US um, shapefile. So I'm going to go into my geodatabase here and add that. And remember, the reason we're doing this is that whenever you're working within a certain spatial extent, it's always good to start with a base uh, data layer from, from that uh, area or, or something roughly that represents it, because that's going to set the, um, this, uh, the extent for your for your data frame here, right? All right, so there, I've got California in. Now, um, you know, I, I didn't find these tools always worked perfectly in some of the previous versions of ArcGIS, although I'm happy to say that in 10.2 they seem to uh, be a bit um, uh, better functioning. Um, so what I'm going to do here is, is I'm just going to my little search window, which if you don't have sort of automatically populate on the right-hand side here, you can, you can also find it up here along with the toolbox and um, all the other options, right? So um, I'm going to do just a quick search for KML. And when I do that, up pops all my options for working at the KML file. Um, and in this case, what I want is I want this. I want this KML to layer, right? Because we're starting with that KML file that I've downloaded now from um, my own personal history. And I want to pull that onto the map. So whenever we open up a tool, we get these green orbs that tell us the mandatory fields that I have to follow. Uh, or uh, have to fill out. So the first thing I'm going to do here is select that downloaded file, which is right here, this history, 8.16.2013. Um, it's actually, you know, the data we're going to look at is actually for the 17th, but it's it's grabbing um, sort of the, the earliest timestamp that was in that. So next, I'm going to save this out um, in the LA folder. And so that should be fine. And I'll give it a new name. Let's call this uh, KML 81713, right? Click OK. All right, so that's going to take a minute to run. And down here, you'll see this little uh, status indicator that shows that, yes, it is actually running. And there we go. So now if I zoom in here, I'll see that I now have my data represented basically is, is uh, one point and one line feature class. Now there's not a whole lot here. If you noticed in the uh, example that we were looking at, uh, you know, we, we've actually got uh, a lot of stuff here that potentially we can use animation, right? Um, and, and that's not really being represented very well in sort of the way that the tool pulled it in. Uh, and, and I might want so maybe I want to take this data and pull it into, say, Tracking Analyst within ArcGIS, or maybe I want to turn these points into a surface using Spatial Analyst or something like that. Um, I can't really do that with what I have right here, because literally I have really one feature, right? So I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know. For, for me, that's a little frustrating. I, I'm not quite sure why. Um, the tool is limited like that, and, and you know maybe there's there's um, uh, other solutions, but but I find that I, I generally have to do a little more work behind the scenes to actually get this data in the format that I want. So if this is all you want, then great. You've got a you got something that at least represents your track, right? And maybe that's all you want. Um, but if you want to take it a step further and you really want to dig into this data, um, you might actually want to open up that KML file and take a look at. Uh, it's it's actual raw data and turn it into an XY file. Okay, so here's uh, an example. Um, I took uh, the raw KML file, I, I imported it into uh, an Excel document, and this is basically what I get. Right, I've got. And I, 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 I'm sorry, I'll go back one step. I also stripped out all the metadata headers and that sort of thing. So I'm not really interested in that. What I'm really interested in are these two fields. I'm interested. Um, this. Um, this time 
uh, field here and this uh, coordinate field here, right? So once I have these um, in, um, and again, it takes a little massaging to get the data in the right format, then I can split them into two fields. Now, if you're going to use Tracking Analyst, actually, you probably don't want to do this. You probably want to keep these fields um, together. Uh, but for my purposes, I split them out separately. So again, this field basically gets split into two fields, date and time, and then this guy I'm splitting out as my longitude and latitude fields, right? So with a little extra cleanup, right, so now I'm just stripping out the rest of that file, I'll end up with something like this, right? And I can, um, if you export this as a, as, a CFC, as a CSV file, it should work really well. And that's something that I can pull directly into ArcGIS, right? So there's my file. So going back to ArcGIS, and uh, I'll probably need to close Microsoft Excel. So I'm going to close that now. I'm going to go, uh, and I'm just going to add that file back in. So um, I've created already a CSV based off of that Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to go grab that now, go into my Los Angeles folder here. And let's see, I put him, here he is, LA Latitude version 2 add this guy in. Now I can open up this attribute uh, table just like I can any other shapefile or feature class and there we go. Same data, right? These are the two fields right now that I'm going to read in as my X and Y coordinates. So I'm going to right click on my table here, display X, Y data. I'm going to go kind of with the default settings here, click OK. Now it's going to tell me that I don't have a unique ID basically for my rows. Don't worry about this. Um, what will happen is the next step, of course, that we want to do is take this data file and export it out as a shapefile or a feature class, right? Because otherwise, it's just an in-memory um, reference to the, the CSV. So I click OK, and there we go. So now I've got my points, and this is much more powerful than just my line file, right? So now these are all date and time stamped uh, latitude, longitude points, and you can see that they actually line up pretty uh, pretty nicely on top of that um, polyline, obviously, because that's what was used to generate the polyline in the first place. Um, so now I, I've actually got uh, pretty much what I want. I've got both the line file and the point file together, and now I can go off and do some, some GIS uh, heavy lifting. Now, um, just a reminder, one of the nice things is that when you pull in a, a data file like this, just if you want to give it a little more context, you can always add a nice base map. Um, from ArcGIS online, and I'm just going to grab this topographic map, add them in, and then you'll see the data. All right, there we go. Uh, so again, um, final step that we probably want to do is I've got this event file, right? Um, I want to take this and actually export it out as a shape file. So I'd go data, export data, and then you're done. So. Uh, you know, I hope that you have a chance to explore sort of your own uh, geographic footprint. I think it's worth looking at a couple of them, you know, sort of over a period of time. Um, it, it's very interesting, actually, if you do this with your own data on, say, a, a time series of, of maybe, I don't know, a week or two. Um, you'll see quickly how location alone without, uh, you know, any other real attributes um, can, can really tell you an awful lot. Uh, You'll, you'll quickly start to see, you know, for example, uh, where you work, um, where you tend to hang out, all those types of patterns um, really emerge. Um, so it's it's pretty powerful stuff. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, demonstration. If, if you have any questions, um, you know, you can post them in the comments. I can't always get to them, but uh, a lot of the other users um, might may chime in uh, with thoughts as well. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope uh, you have a chance to explore this pretty interesting feature.